everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel for today's video. I have my April wrap up. So surprisingly to me, I feel like I say this almost every single month, my reading got better in the month of April. Like every single month it's been getting better and better, but instead of reading 11 books, like I've been doing like every single month, but my page number getting better, I actually read a total of 19 books minus one DNF, so like 18 whole books in the month of April for a total of 4,917 pages, like almost 5,000 pages in the month, which is ridiculous for me. I feel like I normally aim for like 2,000 pages a month, um, but I did read quite a few graphic novels and stuff, so that does pad the numbers a little bit. But like overall, oh my gosh, 19 books in the month of April, um, which also does mean I did finish my magical readathon goals. So I read all of the books that I talked about in my TBR for the magical readathon. So when August comes and we do the next round of it, I have options for my calling. Yeah, do more stamps. And so as always, we are going to be going into some stats before we go into the actual like books that I read. Um, and Presley is coming in and out doing stuff here at the table so you might see him in the background. So stats. Like I said, I read 19 books. Of those books, six were physical and 13 were ebooks. For the genres, six were romance, five were fantasy, three were horror, two were paranormal, two were historical, and one was contemporary. For the formatting of it, I did have one short story collection, nine novels, and nine graphic novels. For the publishing, three of them were indie published or self-published, and 16 were traditionally published. For how I got the book or read the book, I did read one from Kindle Unlimited, one was an ARC, two of them were bought this year, four of them I read off of Webtoon, I will talk about that when we get there, and 11 of them were books from my owned TBR. And then for the age groupings, I did read 11 young adult books, which is actually quite high for young adults lately for me. I feel like I read a lot more adult. And then I did read eight adult titles. And so that's it for the stats. We're going to go into the star ratings and then into the books. So for star ratings, like I mentioned before, I did have one DNF. I had three three star reads, one three and a half star, five four stars, one four and a half star, and eight five star reads. Okay, and so we are going to start with the books. We're going to start at the lowest with the DNF and then move all the way to my favorite book of the month. So the DNF that I have here is Hook's Tale by John Leonard Peelmeyer. I actually did a vlog this month of like Peter Pan types of retellings and I want to say I almost got halfway through this book. Uh, I do talk about it more in the vlog but this is supposed to be a like reimagining of Captain Hook, like how he came to be in the Peter Pan story. It is written in, they say, like a Victorian Edwardian style, which is not my favorite thing, but it actually wasn't horrible in this book. However, Captain Hook in this book is not like Captain Hook. He's like a teenage boy, and it just got really into like sexual sort of things. Like every single female character he talks about, it's very much that. Like, the mermaids, he's constantly talking about their breasts, and he sort of gets into a relationship with Tiger Lily. And then Tinkerbell potentially does something sexual to him in his sleep, and I just got to the point where I was like, this is not for me, I could not keep going. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely DNF'd this. Moving into the three stars, I have another Peter Pan book that I read in the vlog. This is God of Neverland by Gamma Ray Martinez. This is actually a story set like in the future of the Peter Pan tale, where we have an adult Michael Darling who used to be part of this group called the Knights of the Round, which like deals with fairy tale 
monsters like they've come to life sort of thing um, and he has retired from this group before the book even starts um, but they want to bring him back in because Peter Pan has gone missing and Peter Pan is supposedly like a god and he needs to be there for children's imaginations and all this kind of stuff and this wasn't necessarily a bad book it is written a little bit passively like almost all of the Peter Pan books that I read for that vlog were um, but for me personally I would have liked to know more about the Knights of the Round because we have a lot of like cameo things of like potentially other fairy tale mythology type of stuff and they also talk a lot about what happened before when Michael was in the Knights of the Round before the book started. And so I was really hoping for more of that and then we also got into the actual like Neverland stuff and for me personally none of it really felt like it needed to be Peter Pan Neverland related. Um, a lot of the stuff that we got told in the story or that was related to Neverland felt more like hints to the original story, like nods to the original story. So like if you knew the story or even if you've watched like the Disney Peter Pan you would have expected to see Wendy and Captain Hook and all that kind of stuff and so I was just sort of hoping for more from the story. Um, it was written okay, it came together okay at the end but like it didn't leave me feeling really really good or really really bad so that's why it's a three star here. Then my next three star is another Peter Pan one. This is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This was a little bit of a disappointment for me because I absolutely loved Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas that I read in 2020. Like I think it was my favorite book of 2020 and this technically was written before that book. Cemetery Boys was bought first but this was written first and I do feel like the writing style of it. It doesn't feel as put together as Cemetery Boys. I was trying not to compare them but like I really really love that one. This one is a contemporary retelling of Peter Pan so we do have Peter, we do have Wendy um, and this is like where she and her brothers got lost in the woods for I think they said a few months at one point in time and she was the only one that returned and now it's a few years later and Peter is back to like see her because his shadow is missing, something like that. This one I ended up skimming a little bit because of the fact that it's trying to be a little bit too much of a romance when I would have liked it to have dealt more on the mystery of why she's the only one of her and her brothers who came back from the woods after they had gone missing. Um, and so it just felt like there was no sense of urgency in it. They were going out and getting ice cream and like going on a date when other kids have started to go missing in the same way her brothers did. And so it's just uh, one of those things. I will say I did like the last, I can't remember how many pages exactly, it was in the vlog, but the last like 80 pages or so really go into a sort of theory that I've seen before about Peter Pan stuff and so when that came about I was like ooh okay I'm interested but again it just sort of fell flat. I feel like it needed more time to be explained and have a little bit more detail and more pages dedicated to that because that was the most interesting part of the story but otherwise it wasn't horrible. It's just one of those things where I feel like I'm very curious about more work from Aidan Thomas but I think because this was technically his first book uh, it was not as good as Cemetery Boys. Like it didn't live up to that for me and so this was just okay. And then my last three star that we have here is Collide by Michelle Maddow. So this was a book that I read on ebook because it has been on my ebook reader for forever it feels like. And basically it follows our main character who ends up at prom or a homecoming dance, something like that. And while there a high school shooting happens, she watches like her boyfriend die in front of her and then gets shot and wakes up in an alternate reality where her boyfriend is no longer her boyfriend, her mom never died in a car accident months ago, and it's like a week before the shooting was supposed to happen and she's trying to figure out how to prevent it. This one, again, I gave it a three star because I felt like it needed slightly more development. Um, I know these are teenagers, this is technically a YA, but she was very much again into the whole, oh woe is me, I miss my boyfriend who doesn't know that I'm not the same girl, like I came from an alternate reality sort of thing. And so I feel like she was definitely more focused on those aspects than on trying to figure out who did the school shooting sort of thing. Um, so that, the, the sort of priorities in this story 
did not feel like they should have been priorities. Same thing as like Lost in the Neverwoods. Uh, I did enjoy what I read. It was very, very quick to read. I did like the sort of alternate reality aspects and how she could sort of prove to certain people that she's not the exact same person. And then the story ended. <laughs> and it just felt out of left field. It felt abrupt. I wished there was more to the actual ending of the book um, because like the ending did not do it for me. So I would have potentially given this a higher rating, um, even though it was just a sort of like quick, fun, I say fun, even though it deals with a school shooting type of thing. But like it was a quick, fun read. And then the ending happened and I was like, wait a second, did we just throw everything out the window? Um, it didn't exactly, but that's sort of how I felt. And so I wish the ending was a little bit more put together. Okay, and then my one three and a half star read was Razor Blades in My Head by Donnie Goodman. This is the short story collection. It is horror short stories, and I gave it a three and a half. So what I ended up doing was like reading the stories, rating them individually, because obviously some stories I thought were better than others, and then I averaged out the rating, so that's why it's a three and a half. I will say that some of my favorite stories from this collection were Hourglass and Teddy. Um, besides those, I want to say the stories averaged in the three and four star range. I actually think I gave Hourglass and Teddy four and a half or five stars. I can't fully remember, but those were the two that I really, really enjoyed. And then there might have been a couple that were like a two star. Overall, I do like the writing and the sort of horror elements in these stories. Some of the stories were just way too short for me, so even though this is a short story collection, I was really wishing for more development and more intrigue, like something that would make me want to read a longer book of his. Moving into the four stars, the first one I have here is A Man Among Ye Volume 1 by Stephanie Phillips. This one is a graphic novel comic sort of thing that is about pirates and I did end up getting this one in the humble bundle um like badass women sort of collection so obviously we are following a very like strong female character in this one and what I thought was interesting is it is actually based on real life pirates so like these are historical figures that got put into this story I gave it a four star because I was very intrigued and I liked what I read however it just didn't quite have that like full five star thing for me. I don't know how to describe that. Usually it's an emotional connection for me, but there is I think a volume two of this and because I liked the first one so much, I do want to read the second one, but it's very much like I said, following a badass female pirate who is based on a person from history. So I really did enjoy this one. Then my next four star is Lock and Key Volume 3 Crown of Shadows by Joe Hill. So this is one that I was not planning on reading this month, um, but the book that you guys actually voted for in the poll um, for the books that had the word shadow in it, I think it was The Shadow Queen. I did not get to it and I was like, I need a book with shadow for my magical readathon TBR stuff. So I ended up getting this one off of Kindle Unlimited and it's a four star. I think I've rated all of the lock and key volumes that I've read so far four stars. Um, this one I think I actually liked a little bit more than the first two only because I started watching lock and key on Netflix before I started reading the <laughs> comics and the comics like the actual story that the TV show is based on is a little bit darker and more problematic in some of the content in them because of like when it was written and that kind of thing um, but this one deals with a bunch of like shadows they are finding more keys in this house and it was something that I had never seen before like I don't think I actually finished season one of Lock and Key because I wanted to start reading the comics. I think there's actually a season two of Lock and Key. I need to continue watching eventually, but I liked what they did with the shadows and how it's all coming into the lore in this house with these keys. Um, but again, I just didn't have that emotional connection to this volume, so it's a four instead of a five. Then my next four star is Perfect Distraction by Allison Ashley. So this is a romance, an indie romance, that is with a pharmacology resident. So they are not a student any longer. They're doing their residency at a hospital um, and a cancer patient. One thing I will say is that sometimes the sort of like caretaker, hospital worker, medical person relationship to a patient can be very out of place and have power dynamics. One thing I really did enjoy is that there was a lot of talk about how it wasn't necessarily the best idea to 
start a romantic relationship between them together. Uh, I did not feel that there was any power dynamic stuff going on and so I really did enjoy the characters and the way that their romance came together. Um, I will say that some of the writing was a little bit cheesy but I mean like that's gonna happen in romances sometimes. Um, but so otherwise I really did enjoy this one. I will also say just because this is not a problem for me whatsoever but I know some people would like to know there is no sex or smut or anything in this book whatsoever. So it is very much focused on the romance and there is I think like a fade to black scene near the end of the book when they actually decide to become a couple, that kind of thing. That like I said is no problem for me whatsoever, especially because I do identify as demisexual and so sometimes when sex scenes are very explicit, especially like near the beginning of a romance book, that will turn me off. Not having sex scenes doesn't turn me off whatsoever. So this was a really good one. I'm very curious about some of the other books that this author has written because I think there's two other ones that sort of fit into this world that she has created. Like I think the next book that she published after this one, which was her debut, follows I think the sister of the guy from this book. So like I'm very curious about those. My next four star is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. It's glaring at me with the light coming through the window. So this one is very, very hard hitting, very heavy. It took me forever to read this one and I ended up having to do a buddy read to do this this month. And I do think the buddy read really helped, um, especially since it made me slow down a little bit in order to read this. I wasn't trying to read everything at once, although I do feel like this is a book that like, if I was reading it by myself, I probably would have picked it up and just marathoned the entire thing. Um, and so there were some really, really good parts in here, very hard hitting parts. Um, but I also feel like it didn't quite go the way I was fully expecting this to go. I don't know how to exactly explain it for why it is a four star instead of a five, except for the fact that like there was some part in the middle where it didn't feel like we were connected to the same storyline about police shooting and killing a friend of Star. Um, so the fact that we were so removed from that at certain parts, and again, it could have been because of the fact that I read this as a buddy read, and so it was so spaced out for me in my experience that like the beginning was really, really good, the ending was really, really good, but there were some parts in the middle that I just didn't feel as connected to that could have done it. Also, some of the writing in here, I did really like that the author gave Star a very unique voice, but again, there were some parts, especially like in the middle, when Star is describing what's going on, that just felt very blunt, and like the sentence structure was very, very short, 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 short sentences, that again, I just didn't really like that part. So, the middle of it was a little bit disappointing for me, but otherwise I think this is a very important story and I'm very glad I finally read it. My last four star is my last Peter Pan book, finally. It's Lost Boy by Christina Henry. This is one of the ones that surprised me this month especially. I didn't give it a full five star, but I disliked a different book, like 100% hated a different book by Christina Henry and so even though I still had this one on my shelf I was very hesitant to read it because I wasn't too sure what I was going to think of it if I was going to like it or not. This one is a horror retelling spin-off sort of thing of Peter Pan where we have Hook who is brought to Neverland as a child and is a companion of Peter Pan before he ends up becoming Captain Hook. I really did enjoy this one. It is very very dark. We have murder and mutilation and lots of blood and gore and talk about previous child abuse stuff. So there is very, very hard topics in here, but I think because of the fact that it is written as a horror retelling, it was really, really good. The only thing that I still wish it would have had is a little bit more tie-in to the original Peter Pan. Some of the other Peter Pan things that were more retellings or like origin stories, um, that kind of stuff, they actually had like here's sort of the hint of like where it would have gone in the original Peter Pan book because I have read that one before. Not my favorite fairy tale, classic, or anything like that, but I do know like the stuff that went on in it. This one though, I liked what they did with Captain Hook's character and with some of the other Lost Boys, but it didn't feel like it was a natural progression from this story to where we would have seen stuff in Peter Pan. 
and I just wish we would have been able to see that connection slightly more. Okay, moving into my four and a half star, I have Spellbinder by LJ Smith. The glare over here, I picked the wrong time of day to film this video. This is a 1990s like paranormal romance. It's the third book in the Night World series, which each book so far has been individual. Like you technically could read one book without having read the other ones. Although I think it's all interconnected by like family stuff. So like the characters in here I think are technically related to the sisters in book two who are cousins or something from book one, something like that. Um, one thing I will say about these is that they are paranormal romance, um, but it is like almost 100% insta-love for every single one because they have this thing that's like a soul bond type of thing and almost every single book brings that up. So if you don't like insta-love or if you can't get around that, you might not enjoy these, but in general they're just really really quick fun reads. Like I can read one of these in one sitting because they're like 200 something pages mass market like they're just quick fun reads this one had to do with witches um and i know we've had some vampires and stuff in the past and so yeah i just really enjoyed this i can't really even get into why too much again it wasn't a full five star but um, they're addicting. These books are very, very addicting. I never read them when they first came out, so I'm definitely late to the party. Um, but yeah, I just have a great time reading these. And then moving into the five stars. So the first three five stars that I have here are Wind Issues 1, 2, and 3 by James Tinian IV. So these are ones that I've had since last year. I think I got them in a Humble Bundle last year and I'm really enjoying the story so far. This is basically like a fantasy world where we're in this city where they do not like magic. Like it is outlawed from the king down basically, um, but our main character has pointed ears, which I think is like an indicator that he has magic. And so we're dealing with like the political sort of stuff that way. And in this, I don't know if it's like issue one or issue two, but they bring up the fact that like, they're gonna have to try and sneak him out of this city because of the fact that like, if he gets caught, he's gonna die. But also all the people that love him and have hidden him like his entire life, they're going to die. Um, this also does have LGBTQ characters in it. And I thought going in just because of how cute the like art style was that this was going to be for a younger audience. I do think you could read this um, as like a young adult level. I think I actually might have rated them as young adult on my stats and everything. Um, but they do have some darker like hints and stuff going on, especially in the later issues. But yeah, I'm just really, really enjoying this because of the whole like magic is bad, but like we're sort of seeing that it's not potentially actually bad. I'm very curious how this story is going to continue. Then for the next four five star reads, I have Heartstopper volumes one, two, three, and four by Alice Oseman. So <laughs> Heartstopper came out on Netflix. I've been like sort of interested in Heartstopper as the actual like comic sort of thing, um, but I never picked them up. I watched the show, absolutely love the show. I don't know if it's just me or because I'm pregnant or whatever it is, but there were multiple episodes where I was crying just because it was like so, so good. So obviously I had to <laughs> read them. I think I watched the entirety of Heartstopper in one day and then either the very next day or the day after, depending on what I was doing, I then marathoned the entirety of volumes one through four off of webtoon because she does update them on webtoon um five out of five stars i will say the first couple volumes are very very cute and wholesome and there's not as much conflict in them as in the tv show like there was some stuff that was differing than the comics however it's a very faithful adaption in my opinion. I loved seeing the similarities and the differences. And then we get to volumes like three and four <laughs> of the comics and it gets much, much darker. Things that I did not expect, like still good. All of them were five out of five stars. Um, but I didn't realize that we were going to get into some really, really dark topics like mental health and eating disorders and stuff like that. 
in those volumes. Um, but I absolutely loved it. So if you're not aware of Heartstopper, even though I think everybody on BookTube and the book community has been like screaming about it in April, it is a teenage romance, like finding out who you are. Um, I love the fact that we have the male male romance, um, but we do also have a side sapphic romance and that is definitely more in the forefront in the TV show than in the books, but I like that. We have a trans character who, again, I love the fact that they brought her more to the forefront in the TV show than it was in the books originally. So like, it's like a perfect adaption. Like I absolutely loved it. I love the comics. I'm going to need to own them eventually. But yeah, I, again, was not planning on reading those this month, but I did. And then finally, my last book, the favorite book of the month, is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. So this is a sapphic romance. I absolutely loved it. We have Delilah Green, who is basically just used to one night stands, doesn't want to fall in love, doesn't want to have a relationship. And she's coming back to her small town that she left years ago for her stepsister's wedding. She's very jaded. I just loved all this. And then we also have Claire, who is a single mom. Her ex is still around, causing trouble, and they sort of just hit it off. Claire is Delilah Green's stepsister's best friend, and so we have that whole dynamic here too, but again, it was just the way the relationship developed was so good. Like, you could see the steps that they went through. This is like one of my favorite types of romances where the relationship and the actual romance comes first. There is sex in this book, but it comes at a later point in the story, and I loved how everything was just handled with the actual, like, romance and characters. Like, I loved these characters so, so much. Loved this story so, so much. And the sequel slash companion novel I think is coming out next year because I think this one came out this year I'm very very excited like I absolutely loved this one okay and that is going to be it I feel like this is going to be a longer wrap-up than I was hoping for but I definitely read a lot more than I thought I was going to this month and so yeah that is going to be it if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up to let me know subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos I do have videos up Tuesdays and Thursdays so I will see you then Bye.